Haven't you heard? What? Tell me. MetaHumans is here. MetaHumans? <laughs> What's going on? MetaHumans. If you haven't heard yet, there is going to be a custom tool from Unreal Engine that allows us to go onto a browser and create completely custom characters that have a full um, skeleton rig for both their face, their body, um, that allows us to integrate with all of their uh, existing tools, like perhaps the AR kit, where it'll capture facial animation, uh, mocaps and, and animations to fully bring these characters into the tool, use them for animation purposes, use them for game purposes, and it is ridiculous. That's all the good news. The bad news on my side is this is exact. Well, it's good and bad. Uh, this is exactly what I've been looking for. So if you've been following me on the, the channel, you've seen that I've been playing around with, with face animations and, and character animations. I found these assets uh, and I've really been playing around with anime assets because that was the only tool at the time that I could find that had everything I needed. Um, and then I recently started diving into uh, Make Human. I don't know if you've heard of it heard of it, but it does the same thing, allows you to create custom assets. Here's one that I just sort of built in, I would want to say like 15 minutes, and then had it imported into Blender. The intention was to fully rig this guy and then bring him into um, into Unreal and, and show you how to link it up with Live Link and the Apple AR kit and, and do all these custom animations, make a little scene. Um, I've also been researching this tool from MB Lab. Uh, it's a plugin. And again, fully open source, but it's a plugin with Blender, allows you to create uh, custom career characters, actually has a custom character generator. And again, the idea was to create a character here, get it into Unreal, show you how to use it with the Apple AR kit, um, get it into Sequencer, show you how to create animations and sort of put together this little montage. Um, so I dropped all that because Unreal must be reading my mind and uh, decided to release this in the middle of all of that. So I dropped that for now. And instead, we're going to dig into MetaHuman Creator, and I'm going to show you how to use this thing. So let's go. OK, so the first thing you need to do is go to the Unreal Engine uh, launcher. And in there, it's got this uh, story going on, a sneak peek at MetaHuman Creator. The other story that you might be interested in is the control rig mannequin. One of the amazing features that's in the MetaHuman Creator is this uh, control rig. So I would recommend playing around with with this as well. Um, and you know maybe in the future I can dive into some more detailed control rig specific uh, tutorials. Um, but yeah, I watched a three-hour presentation from Unreal on this. Um, that's where I got a lot of my information that we're going to use today. Um, so anyways, this asset's here available for you. But uh, for now, I'll just direct you to this MetaHuman Creator. The other thing, again, if you've been watching my channel, you know I've been spending a lot of time um, using the Apple AR kit and the face tracking there to do animation on assets. We're going to use that today, too. So um, before you get the MetaHuman Creator, if you haven't used the Apple AR kit, um, feel free to watch uh, the tutorial that I put together. It's from in my opinion, it's it's the most detailed tutorial you're going to find. It's very step by step, very simple, um, and includes all the information that you're going to need. Um, so that's available. And if you don't have uh, an Apple uh, Apple device, so an iPad Pro, I think version two and higher, or a uh, iPhone X or higher, um, then you won't be able to do the the facial recognition portion of this. Um, but you can still follow along, you can see what we're doing, and then you'll be able to do all the other animations. But essentially, I'm tying together the control rig, uh, animations, and then custom face animations to sort of build a little, you know, short, maybe one minute movie clip or, or whatnot. So um, anything I use uh, will be free, of course. Everything on my channel, I always use free assets, use free tools. Any of those things I'll put in the links in the description below. Other than that, Let's get into it. OK, so uh, if we just click on this guy here, uh, it brings up the sneak peek. And you can go ahead and, and read all these details or watch the videos if you haven't. Really, I'm just trying to get to this link, get the sample project. Um, if we click on that, it should um, bring up this 
excuse me, bring up this screen and then we'll just hit download. It's going to open up our uh, launcher and you know, you'll just download the project. It'll take a bit. I've already downloaded it. I've got a couple of projects open already in order to practice and prepare and, and get all the information together for you guys. Um, so I'm going to create a, um, a third project here. Um, so we will call this MetaHumans Tutorial. I'm going to hit Browse. <laughs> well, at least I am. You guys can put this wherever you want. I'm going to go here, here. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this MetaHumans underscore tutorial. I am going to select that folder, and that's where I'm going to put that. We'll create that project. That'll take a little bit here. While that's loading, I'll, I will show you um, and, and sort of give you a heads up. This um, sample project is resource intensive. That will, should give you some good, uh, that should give you good indication that the MetaHuman assets, when they are available and the tool, that they are going to be likely um, resource intensive. So if you want to use, you know, the, the hair, uh, features and all those sort of things, you are going to need um, a higher end uh, computer. I will show you what I have. I have probably the bare minimum in terms of GPU, but um, I'm pretty well set up uh, for the rest of the the uh, specs. So here, let me just show you in task manager. Um, so I noticed, uh, so I've got 128 gigs of RAM, way more than you'll need, but I have noticed, and you'll see already just with um, the projects that I have open, uh, I'm already consuming 18 gigs. So if that gives you any sort of indication um, with the project running, I see, I did see my memory broach the 40 gig mark. Um, you know, I've, I've got my uh, streaming pools set pretty high, like I think seven or eight gigs. Um, so you may be able to tweak those, but I think it's really indicative that, you know, bare minimum, you're probably gonna need 64 gigs of RAM. Um, go forward. Now, that being said, I do have, uh, you know, a, a below average sort of uh, graphics card in terms of what we're trying to do here. I wouldn't get anything less than this. Um, I, I've seen performance issues with this card, so I'd really recommend, um, you know, looking at the RTX uh, cards. Right now, as of, what, February, the it's impossible to find an RTX card. As soon as the 3060 Ti comes out, I'm going to be looking at getting that. I think that's the most affordable, most bang for your buck. Um, so anyways, you'll need at least a 2000 series in my mind, and you really should look at the 3060 Ti. It's about, mm, I think it's like 300 US, 500 uh, Canadian. So that gives you any uh, idea. And then I have the um, Ryzen 3900X. I didn't see a whole um, whack of uh, problems with my CPU. I've got 12 cores. So the most I saw was maybe up to 10% utilization. Um, but anyways, this will give you an idea of the specs and when things start to degrade as we go along here, I'll pop this open and you can kind of see what's happening on my computer. And then that'll maybe give you a, a range of, of what you'll need to, to do some of this work. Okay, so we created that project. I guess let's go and open it and dive into it and see what we got. Boom. So uh, this is what the project looks like um, when you first open it up. Uh, we'll go through and I'll sort of explain uh, as much as I understand, as much as I was able to sort of reverse engineer. Um, but for now, I'll just, I'll hit the project for some of you that maybe don't have the opportunity to run it um, or get in here. Um, so I'll just show you what it is. I am a MetaHuman, the next generation of digital human powered by Unreal Engine. MetaHumans are high fidelity digital characters created by you, the user, on our new content creation platform, MetaHuman Creator. I am fully rigged, ready for animation and motion capture, allowing you to work in context. With everything running live in Unreal Engine, my motion works seamlessly. On other characters, I have eight levels of detail and have been tested on a wide range of hardware platforms, from feature film to mobile. If you're interested in learning about my animation rig or high fidelity deformations, built on control rig, the new strand based hair system via the groom component, or how everything is tied together and animated in sequencer, then have a look under the hood in this project.
This is just a glimpse of things to come. Fade out. Cool. So I, I don't know if it if it's going to translate well over YouTube, but man, do those assets look really, really, really good. Okay, so so what's working here? Let me just show you um, what I've been able to find. Um, so why don't we start with the characters themselves in the project here in sample metahumans? You'll see uh, a couple of folders. Um, most importantly, you'll see common and then metahuman one and four. Metahuman one is the female asset, and metahuman four is the male asset. Uh, common is their shared features across. So within the common folder, and actually under female, and medium, and normal weight, and body, this is where you're going to find the actual metahuman skeleton that they're sharing. If we double click on that, um, if you're familiar with skeletons and meshes and whatnot, you'll see somewhat of a familiar screen, right? You've got your animation blueprint, um, animation assets, uh, your mesh, and then your skeleton, and then of course your, your physics setup. This does look a little bit different. So that's one of the first things that you'll notice is that if I click on this uh, asset in the editor, it's actually a blueprint. Um, and if I click on the blueprint itself, and then uh, go over to the viewport. And I'll just go back here because I think my face was in the way. I'm going to slide that down here for now. Um, I just clicked on the blueprint here, edit blueprint, took me over to this, and then just on the, the, the file system, uh, tab system here, I came over to the viewport. One of the first things that you'll no notice is that if you're not familiar with blueprint um, characters, they're built a little bit different. You might be familiar with the mannequin, um, but the mannequin doesn't come apart in pieces. Um, I, I was, it was kind of interesting because I was wondering, you know, with the introduction of all this facial capture and, and mocap, um, all of this uh, sort of VR capture, I was wondering how they were going to tie it all together into one asset. And I kind of had a feeling that they were going to break it out into pieces. So you're starting to see that here is that you'll be able to animate the face and the body and, and hands and torso and things separately and all these things um, come apart. So that'll feel a little bit different and maybe uncomfortable uh, to start, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, so that's one major thing I'll call out. Uh, going back to this, the other thing that seems a little bit weird is because they're in pieces, so when I open up the skeleton, you're only seeing these hands and ankles. So where the heck is the rest of the body? Well, one of the first things you can do is you can go to character and then you can go to bones and you can put all hierarchy on. And now you're actually able to see um, you know, the outline of this, this character and the mesh that's attached to it is only these hands and these ankles. You could change the mesh to see other p components of the body. They've linked, um, they've linked those up to some degree. See, there's the shoes. Um, and so they all trace back to the same skeleton, um, but there's different, uh, meshes attached. Um, why they did that, I'm not 100% certain yet. I'm, I'm not a pro. Um, you know, if you've been on my channel, you know I've only been at this what since the beginning of December. I don't have I don't have an animation background. I don't have any Unreal Engine or Unity programming experience. I'm just I'm learning this all for the, the first time. Um, so the good news is is you, you can at least get to my level, which isn't that high. Um, you know, pretty quickly. Anyways. Um, yeah, so that's the skeleton. Uh, I talked a little bit about the meshes. Uh, if you click on the animations, you'll see, you'll be able to kind of find all the animations that they've uh, included in this package. It's the kind of the easiest way to see all the animations. They just come up here in the bottom. Um, I've done it again though. I'll move my face. Um, you'll be able to see all these animations down here. And if you just double click on them, it rotates through. So you can see this F sample must be the female sample and the male sample has got to be the male sample. So these are the animations that you would have seen in that sequence that we just played at the beginning when we hit play, when we got into this uh, project. Um, and you'll see it just has the body there. They've got a little bit of bloat in here because you'll find some animations that they were obviously just messing around with that they left in the project that aren't actually uh, used as far as I can tell. And I think they're just demonstrating um, how the skeleton and, and the rig can work. Um, so that's that. I'll turn off some of these animations. Uh, a little bit later in the project, I'm going to show you how to retarget onto these assets and use existing animations. It's not perfect. There's a couple of bugs. I think there's an opportunity to, um, from what I've seen, use the control rig 
um, to adjust the um, animations across different skeletons, but I, I haven't learned that yet. I've seen them do it with um, Paragon Asset and the, the mannequin, um, and it worked quite well, but it was quite complex. So, you know, maybe in the future we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, that's animations, uh, animation blueprint, if you're familiar with it. Uh, there's a little bit of, of things that are going on different than, you know, the, the mannequin. So you can take a look at that. The control rig is, is sort of the new thing in here. Um, so take note of that and you can kind of play around and reverse engineer some of that. And then, you know, there's, there's uh, some pose drivers happening there um, and nothing really happening in the event graph. So that's, that's sort of um, the gist of the skeleton. Uh, what else can I show you? Um, that was in the common assets. Is there anything else I want to show you in the common assets? Um, there are like this, this is the control rig that we keep talking about. So this may be relatively uh, a new concept for people. Um, in here, basically you've got your, your skeleton and these outer rings allow you to, um, they're, they're essentially the what they call the IK drivers. I, I don't know what the, the definition of I, IK is, but essentially the way that it works is rather than posing individual bones sort of one at a time to animate against, what these IKs do, so if I grab this outer orange ring and then move um, the asset around, is you'll notice it calculates based on the like hip movement, how should the knees move and bend. And, you know, likewise for, you know, the feet, if I move that around, you'll see, whoops, I moved it too far there. But if I, if I move it around, for the most part, it sort of calculates where should the knee and the foot bend uh, in relative to where I'm moving that IK, as opposed to if I actually move the bone here, I'd have to move each individual bone um, on its own. Um, and so it's really a, a good animation technique. If you want to reset the skeleton, if you've messed around or played with it, you just hit Control G. Can't reset. Yeah, see there. Oh, now it did. Okay. I, I don't know. Maybe that's a bug or something. I had to pull the leg out and then hit Control G and then it reset. Anyways, okay. So that's good. We covered that. Control G does reset that. Um, and yeah, all these little items here are, are the control pieces. You know, you can get down and you can actually control um, the the fingers and stuff. And it depends how far you want to go down the rabbit hole with with animation. Um, the other thing you can do with the control rig is you can, um, uh, I just realized playing back the video that my face was over this section. So all that I'm doing here is um, for the control rig, I came into preview controller. I chose use specific animation. And then in the drop down here next to animation, uh, I'm just selecting an animation. So you can see me do this part. You just couldn't see the, the two, first two clicks. So it's just use specific animation and then um, click this drop down, and then you should be able to follow along. Um, put a specific animation on there. So if we pulled um, one of the ones that they had up there, um, you can see it starts moving. That's not a great animation. Where's one, uh, it was, I think it was like M underscore. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, here, sample M, and M. So we put that one on and did it do anything? You know, you're really failing me right now. <laughs> uh, preview animation, use a specific animation and take the female sample. Is she moving? Not really. What if we do a backwards solve? There you go. Okay, so actually that that makes sense. So here's here's one of the concepts that comes with the control rig, and this this really cool feature is the backwards solve. So forward solve basically says anywhere you pose these assets, um, the control rig will will follow it, and then it'll take note of where are the IKs and where are the bone locations. Uh, as you progress through an animation. A backward solve is um, actually having uh, an animation that already exists and then being able to attach it to a control rig. So the beauty there is like, say we go and get a whole bunch of mocap animations and we wanna attach them to a specific skeleton and a control rig so that 
um, we can adjust, you know, using the IKs, little pieces within that animation that aren't quite um, good. So a good example of that is you use a VR set to cap motion capture animations, you bring them into Unreal Engine, and then you want to attach it to a character, but, you know, there's something wrong, like maybe you moved your hand wrong or or it didn't quite capture the emotion that you were trying to grab perfectly. So you can t you can backward solve, put it onto the control rig, and then use the IKs to um, adjust your animation um, that way. So anyways, uh, long story short, there's some really cool features packed into the control rig. It's very complex, <laughs> if this gives you any sort of um, idea of that. So I'm not going to go into that. Um, you know, at this point, uh, I think it'll take some time, obviously, to, to learn all that in detail. Um, and I did watch a three-hour video from Unreal. I think I mentioned that, and they, they do start going into to some of this. I, I grasped probably about 20% of, of what they shared, um, which actually was quite a lot, but uh, no way near an expert yet. Um, okay, so that is the control rig. That's what's new in here. Um, what else do we have? Um, I'll show you the face quick, just because this is where this is where we're going to attach. I'm just going to turn the bones off. I turned them on um, earlier, and it's showing them everywhere. Remember, I put on the all hierarchy, so I'm just going to turn it to none. Um, this is where you'll see the um, the Apple AR kit come to life. We can use the live link. This is where it's setting up. Um, we can turn the live link on here. I'm not going to do it now. I think my theory is I, I talked a little bit about how this project is. Here's just another quick um, fix where my face was covering. Um, live link face subject. This is the only um, piece that I was adjusting. So um, if you've got your live link set up, I don't have it turned on right now. Um, but anyways, in the face anim blueprint, you can just use this drop down. And then from this list, you can um, select your live link object. Um, so that's all. Uh, consumes a lot of resources. My theory is if I turn the live link on, then I think it puts my GPU a little bit into overdrive if it's on too long because it's recalculating, recalculating um, the the asset uh, as, as we're going along. So I'm going to leave it off and we'll turn it on when we need it. But we can turn it on here and it would instantly start. Um, you know what? I'll just show you quick. Um, if I just click this, it instantly starts capturing um, my face. Uh, I've got my iPad just down here in front of me, just sitting there watching. Um, but I'm just going to turn that off um, for now. Um, and the best way to do that is window, live link, and I'll just deactivate it here. And then I'll just save that for now. Okay, so that's the face asset. Um, I don't think that there's anything really crazy in here. Your animation graph is similar. Um, if you followed my tutorial or if you've played with the Apple AR kit with the Kite Boy um, or anything like that, it's relatively uh, similar. There's, there's obviously some new stuff in here. And they haven't included head rotation, so I think there's an opportunity to add head rotation in here. Um, but we won't do that just yet. And then um, animation, um, you can see they've got this uh, mapping animation that just shows all the different things that you can move. The one thing that's a little bit different that you'll find is new in this asset is if you're used to shape keys, um, what a shape key is, is it's just basically a curve, um, but it tells it tells um, the mesh that you're using. So you're on the mesh asset. It tells the mesh how much to move. So in Blender, you've got all of your different triangles and things like that. If you actually pull the mesh in Blender, um, st start it here and key and say, you know, this is your regular face, and then um, pull all the assets closed to move the face around, that's called a, a shape key a, a, or, or a, um, a morph target of moving from the, the initial state to, you know, a change state. So, you know, closing an eye or opening a mouth. And that's sort of the science behind integrating Apple's AR kit with Unreal Engine is they basically, they get all this facial tracking information off of your iPhone and with all the code that, that Apple's done for you, it sends it over to Unreal Engine and it basically says, well, here, this eye, portion of the eye, this is all the data that's moving to make it closed. And then on the Unreal side, they pick that up and they attach it to 
uh, and they map it to a morph target. Okay, long story short, if you're used to morph targets um, and you slide these values, nothing happens. So that's a little bit different. Uh, that threw me for a loop at first. And I, I couldn't figure out what the heck is going on. I still don't understand why it doesn't work here and why they moved it. But if you're familiar with it, what you can do is you can come into the animation uh, space. You can click on this red asset, uh, the pose asset, double click on that, and then just like you're used to the morph targets um, on the mesh, you can find them here. So if you want to um, blink the eye, you can adjust this weight. Uh, if you want to move the jaw and so forth. Um, so that's how that's mapped out in this one. Again, I'm not uh, super familiar with the details. I haven't um, done enough reverse engineering to kind of figure out exactly what's going on, but I was able to find this and, and find that functionality if you're looking for it. It's there. Um, and then, you know, likewise with the body, you also have a skeleton asset just for the head. Um, so we got to get used to our characters being broken into uh, pieces. Um, and that's that. So I'm going to close all those. We'll be back into these later when we actually get into doing some work and creating our animation sequence. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm not going to go into all these folders, but you're welcome to go and play in here as much as you want. There's just, this is all the meshes and the hair and, and all that type of crap. Um, all the common shared assets are in this folder. And then there's individual assets um, in each of the uh, metahumans. So you'll see right away that blueprint that we're using or that they're using and we're going to use is, is stored right here. Um, that lines up with this blueprint that's up in uh, that's up in the the outliner. And um, is there anything special in here? Yeah, in the uh, metahuman in the body, that's sort of the UV mapping is in there. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything else um, really particular that we need to dive into. Just know that the two blueprints are just in the top folders there um, for each of the characters. That one seems to be having a bit of a problem. Um, you can see that my um, my computer started to lag a little bit. So I'm now over the texture streaming pool. Um, if I go to task manager, you can see my GPU is just ramped right up to full. Um, my memory, you can see, has gone up to 33 gigs in usage, and my CPU is fine at 10%. Um, so that it kind of just tells me that it's it's really the my GPU that's slowing me down. And like I said, I've I've got an older um, GPU in terms of you know 3D modeling and things like that. So it might give you a, a sort of benchmark on what you might need to perform. Um, I do find that if I close down um, if I close down the project and then come back, um, it fixes a lot of the problems. So I think it's just, you know, the memory uh, requirements are building up over time. Uh, streaming. Okay, it's streaming, R dot streaming pool size. So let's just do that. So I hit the tilde on my keyboard, um, put in, I'm just looking here, uh, it's R dot streaming, but I want to see the size first. Uh, stat streaming, it says. So if I put the tilde, and then supposedly if I type stat streaming, ah, here we go. It tells you where all your pools are configured. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Pool capacity, one gig. Uh, a gig. So that would be why I'm over my streaming pools. They're they're set relatively small. If I um, oops. Can I just retype that command and it goes away? Oh, it just goes away on its own. So if I put an R streaming dot pool size and then I put in 8,000, there you can see instantly the, the pool capacity just jumped up. So you can play around with that and, and figure out uh, what do you need to do. Um, but that should have. Um, Fix the immediate problem, and then I also reboot, rebooted the uh, uh, rebooted the project, and so I think we're going to be pretty clean here. 
And then now I just need to figure out how the hell to get rid of the screen. I'm assuming if I type in the same thing, and I forgot it already, stat streaming, does it just go away? Yeah, cool. Okay, so we're running, uh, we're running pretty smooth now. Um, you can see she's still following my face, even though I didn't, I don't think I set anything up. Like, turn off live link, go away. Oh, that's probably because I reset it. it reestablished. Okay, cool. Um, good. Uh, so that covered that. I showed you the BPs. I showed you the common assets. Um, oh, I didn't show you uh, the levels. So in here, we're in the, the meta human sample level, and uh, there's an MH turntable. All that is is the assets are just spinning on a turntable, so I'm not going to show you that. If you're interested in that, go ahead. Um, what else is in here? Uh, Nothing crazy in cinematics, at least that I found. Materials, I think, is straightforward, so I'm not going to cover that. Um, I think um, uh, the next really important thing for us is just this um, metahuman sample. This is essentially the, it's the sequencer, but it's like, you know, equivalent of a blueprint for animation. And if we just drag this little red uh, marker here, if we drag it up and down the timeline, you'll see that it just, it literally just plays out the sequence that you saw at the beginning. So within their, their overall blueprint structure, um, they must have some um, code to just tell it to run the, the sequence right off the bat. And that's essentially what's happening. So this is really the guts of what's going on in this level. So just going to the sequencer, I'll kind of show you how that is all working. They've brought in separate audio files and we'll do the same in our little uh, project here. Um, they've got different cameras, um, and just, that's just, you know, different camera angles and things like that. Nothing really fancy to dive into there. Some, obviously some special lighting. Um, it's really the magic here is with the characters. So all that they've done is they've dragged in these two blueprints. Um, and then they've animated, um, the character blueprints. Um, you can see them talking. I don't know if, uh, if they, um, just used shape keys to do that, or if they did some sort of facial animation like we're going to do with the AR kit um, or some other mocap device. Um, and then you, I showed you the animations earlier on the skeleton. You can tell they're the same animations. The hands move at the same time and, and the same way. So um, that's what they're using there. Um, underneath the uh, MetaHuman Blueprint tracks, um, they've basically got just the body and the face. Um, because those are gonna, those are the two pieces that animate separately. You have uh, the separate um, bone structure for the face, and then the separate bone structure for the body. And so those are broken into two pieces there. Um, and I think I, I spoke to, you know, they have animations and, and sequences in there. Um, we'll go more into detail that when we actually kick off the tutorial, and you'll see how that all works. Um, but that's essentially what's driving um, this whole sequence. It's the audio. Uh, these blueprints with animations attached to it. And then lastly, the little bit of magic behind the scenes too is you'll notice, for example, um, they've also got these uh, Mac, actor, metahuman, blah, 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 CR. And that CR is basically just for control rig. And if I open up one of these, you'll see that the timeline is actually red for the sequencer until it gets here. And so what you'll see is that at that moment, um, uh, this, this control rig sort of lighting, uh, fires up and all that's doing is if you turn off the visibility, it's actually turning on and off, um, some of those details. So that's all that these sort of four assets are doing is if I played around with, um, the visibility, you would see this stuff sort of, uh, shut off. And so they're just animating whether these, um, control rig, um, visuals are, are, available to be seen at that given moment, right? So if I um, turn the body one on and off here, you'll see that little magic um, goes on and off. And that's representing when I showed you the control rig asset before, those little hoops that you can move the head around and, and whatnot and um, the IKs and, and things like that. So that's it. Um, that's all there is to this. That's how that works. Um, pretty cool stuff. And now what we're going to do is we're going to recreate our own little animation scene. It's, it's uh, definitely not going to be um, as high quality as what they've put together. 
Um, but we'll do our best and it'll at least demonstrate all of the functionality that you'll need to actually create um, what they've done. Hey, um, so this video is already over half an hour, so I'm just going to cut it short here. Um, I hope this gave you a good background of all this is working. I hope that's uh, a value to you. I'm going to create a second video. I've already got it recorded, so it's just a matter of editing it and getting it up. So it'll probably be either tonight or tomorrow. You'll see that online and that'll walk you through how to uh, step by step um, basically create the animation that you saw at the beginning of this, this video. So um, if you're liking uh, the work I'm doing, like and subscribe, follow me and uh, we'll keep grinding away here.